All right, this is problem 38 from section 7.2. And in this one, we're given something which is almost a group, and we want to prove that it is a group. So we're given this non-empty set. It has an associative binary operation, good so far. And then we're told that we have what amounts to a left identity. That is, there's some element, and we multiply things on the left by it, it won't change them. There's also left inverses. Namely, if we can find, if we have some element g, we can find an element to put on the left side of g, and when we multiply, we get back to this left identity element. So, what are we missing to be a group? Well, a group insists that our left identity is also a right identity. It shouldn't matter on what side you multiply, it shouldn't do anything. And the same thing with left inverses. They should also be right inverses. They should take you back to the identity no matter where you put them versus their inverse element. So we need to show those two things, that our left identity is also a right identity, and that our left inverse is also a right inverse. So let's start. We're going to choose an element g in the group, right? some arbitrary element. And we know that if we multiply g by our left identity, we need the left identity on the left. If we multiply it by our left identity, it shouldn't change it. But we want it the other way around. We want to know what happens when you multiply g on the right by e. Do we still get back g? All right, so we're going to play a little, a little game here, a little trick. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start from g e, and we're going to multiply it on the left by our identity. When we do that, of course, it doesn't change anything, because, well, this was a left identity. So I haven't changed anything. E times anything, when you put the E on the left, eh, same thing as you started with. Okay, now here comes the cool, tricky part. What I'm going to do is replace E by something else that I know happens to equal E. And the thing that I choose is first I'm going to take GL, and I'm going to call this the left, I, uh, the left inverse for G. So when you multiply GL times G, you should get back E. Well, every element has a left inverse, including GL. I'm going to call its left inverse GL, L. Why not? So this is the left inverse for the element GL, which happens to be the left inverse for G. Right. Now I can copy my G. And now E, well, I'm going to again replace it by something else, but not GLL, GL, but something a little bit easier. I'm going to replace it by G, GL. All right, is this going to work? No, we need it on the other side. All right, why is this a suitable replacement for E? Well, E is the identity, and I know that G has a left inverse, right? Namely, GL. When I multiply the left inverse by G, I get back the identity element. All right, now we play an associativity game. If I associate these two in the middle, I notice I have G and its left inverse. When I multiply these, I get back the identity. Because that's the left inverse. And when I multiply the identity by something else, the identity just goes away. And so I'm going to be left with this original GLL. This middle part goes away. And then I get GL followed by a G. Okay, again, play a little associativity game here. Notice I have GL and GL's left inverse. When I multiply these, I get the identity element. It's a left identity element, so when I multiply it by G, nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to get G. And so we've proved that G times E, where now our E is on the right side, is still going to be G. And so E is not just a left identity. It's also a right identity. Okay, so the next step is to show that our left inverses are always right inverses. <coughs> So we know, for instance, that if we multiply G with a GL on the left, no problem. We get the identity element. But what happens when we put this GL on the right side? So if I write G times GL, what am I going to get? Well, again, we play a very similar trick. I'm going to add something extra that won't change the quantity. And I'm going to add the identity element. 
It's a left identity, heck, even a right identity now, it doesn't matter where I put it, it's not going to change my quantity. And I'm going to replace E by actually the same thing I did the last time. I'm going to write down the left inverse of GL times GL. Since this is really a left inverse, this makes sense, it's still E. And then I get G times GL. Actually, I should leave this in blue. Okay, but again, I can play the associativity trick. And in the middle, I have G with its left inverse on the left, where it should be, which is going to be the identity, so it's going to go away. And so I'm, I'm going to be left with GLL times GL. But, ah, look, I have GL and its left inverse on the left where it should be, and so I must get the identity element. And so that tells me, if I multiply G by its left inverse, but on the right side, I still get back the identity element, which means that GL is not just a left inverse, it's also a right inverse, which means it's really a two-sided inverse. So all our inverses are both-sided inverses. They really are truly inverses. And so we now have a true two-sided identity. We have all two-sided inverses. And so G is actually a group.